Okay, there we go. Hello, you're tuning into the Fargo 3D Printing Podcast. This We're going to call this Season 3. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the show, we sit and talk about 3D printing in general. Uh, if you're new, hey, nice to meet you. If you're old, uh, I'm usually not the one leading these, but we're switching up the format a little bit. Jake and John are busy enough where they don't have a lot of time to sit down and do research and uh, just do the podcast in general. So they'll pop in here and there if we have special topics or kind of products we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about kind of projects we're working on, uh, try to do some more Skype interviews. I know we have one lined up and I'm not going to blow it yet, but uh, I'm Eric Faldi and then this is Marcus. Hey. Marcus. Marcus Moldashel. Yeah. Nice, German. Nice, difficult Just, to pronounce yep. and spell German last name. Yep. It's real great. Yeah. That's what happens when you live here. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're in Fargo, if you didn't figure it out. Uh, yeah. But we kind of prefaced it last week, which we'll see what yeah. happens. The podcast cool. isn't up yet. I'm really yeah. behind on videos. So this will come up yeah, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, in, in season three, he's going to be my co-host, I yep. think. And we'll have people yep. pop in here and there. If you guys know Eric Atchison, he's one of our printer techs as well. He has a little little projects he works on, like a Nerf gun that he modded up and yeah, that cool. hurt people. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the reason that you're here today, other than being my co-host now, is that right. you did something called the hang printer. Yep. I guess you, you made one. Yeah, I mean, I didn't do any of the designing or anything like that. It was pretty much, um, I had seen Tom Salanders or whoever that, I, if you know about 3D printing Is it Tom YouTube. Salanderer? I always forget yeah, how many If you know about 3D printing end. YouTube, channels you you know his channel um i'd seen his video on it and i wanted to do it and then i kind of got i was in school or i'm in school now in college so i kind of got busy with school did some prints got it fully printed out and then took a while to actually get it built so it took me (laughs) way longer than it should have to build it but i finally got it built working not the best i don't know yeah you can kind of see in frame yeah put it put it in this uh, yeah so like i was just doing random spiral vase mode prints to try it out and they're not the best. This is, uh, if you can see it on camera, this is actually an oval, not a circle, when it's supposed to be a circle. Same with this one. So I don't know, like some steps per millimeter are off probably, but it's not like your normal Cartesian printer where you can easily easily look and say, oh, that's the x-axis or the y. So I'm not quite sure. And also my extruder way over extrudes. So I do a manual extrusion multiplier of 0.6 when I print. And it's, yeah, it, it was... Uh, there was a lot of work that needed to be put into it, and I just now I'm getting busy with school again and starting up this next week, and uh, I just don't have the time, so it's taken down. It was, if you guys see the clips, it's actually was hanging in my kitchen. Off yeah, of so the we'll, ceiling de- fan. we'll definitely have some cutaways to that, and I yeah. think between this and our next topic, we're gonna have just a little. Oh, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll yep. do a quick cut. It was like an eight minute. Yeah, we did a little interview thing, thing. So. but yeah, it just was time to take that down. I. I needed the space for school to start and stuff like that. And uh, actually, he uh, he's coming out with the V3 now. Yeah. So, so the, the name. I'm gonna yeah, here, bring my can... microphone closer to my uh, my cat. My uh, so he's from Sweden. Yep. Uh, it came up automatically in Google Translate as Norwegian. I mean, the languages are kind of close. Right. Um, I am Norwegian by trade, but not by uh, you know I don't really speak anything. <laughs> Two syntax. Uh, that's all I got. But then this is what uh, this is what Google Google Translate does. Torbjorn Ludvigsen. Torbjorn Ludvigs- Ludvigsen. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. It's not really a comparable name for English that I know of. But yeah, uh, yeah Torbjorn. And I actually did reach out to him on Facebook, and mm-hmm. he responded. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, he, there is a. The reason I found out it was him because he didn't have any contacts or picture. Uh, uh, he was posting in the Hang Printer RepRap project on Facebook. So mm-hmm. it's just Facebook.com/groups. Slash hang printer, and there are about 500 people in there. Are you a member? Uh, I'm not. Okay, no, you I, can go in there and brag like, "Hey, yeah, mine's printing." I, I I just wanted to prove it to myself really people, that I could do it. So I'm I'm good without bragging. A lot, of, a lot of people have problems. Uh, but, not like you didn't. Your extruder. Oh was pretty, no, I had tons of problems. Your extruder that's, was pretty janky. No, yeah, this this thing. That's why I really don't want to brag because I don't want to say how long it took me to get it to work because it took a long time, a lot of work. So yours was kind of from a gutted old old 3D printer? Uh, there's mixed parts in it. I took some pieces from my uh, first 3D printer. So I bought in a ramps board from AliExpress. Didn't know if that was good, and I was having problems with my electronics. So I said, forget it. So I used the ramps board that's on my original printer that I 
had uh, it was originally a kit or whatever so it's a genuine board so I'd gotten that and then it worked so I'm not sure if the one I bought from AliExpress is wrong but yeah I had a ton of electronics weird stuff but yeah, I tried to build it as cheap as possible. What? What? How much uh, out of pocket? I mean, I know that I'm, some some of the uh, printing you did here, and it was essentially yeah, so it's actually free of charge, free, but... right? Um, but I mean, I could have done that on my own at at home if I had my printer still, so that was negligible. Um, but I would say I had around a hundred or maybe less in it, just because I had stuff already. Yeah, so, according to Wikipedia, the yeah. the hang printer Wikipedia it said it would be about two fifty. Yeah, yeah. You can go anywhere from two fifty to four hundred, depending on the board, right. and the, you know it's. If you have to print yourself or you go yep. to a bureau, it's going to cost more. Mm -hmm. And uh, like there was uh, the fish, the fishing rod eyelets. I didn't use those. I had designed up some little uh, 3D printed stuff and then pushed a uh, Bowden tube through there. Yeah, so it looked like it worked. That was not the problem. No, yeah. <laughs> the, my frame also melted and got bowed like from each corner where the z-axis strings are sunken down yeah, it's like a dish yeah um i had my stepper voltages way too high and it melted the frame what uh, uh what were they at and what did you change it to uh they were at 1.5 which is the limit that's the, that's pretty high yeah, yeah no that's uh that's real high i i uh that's what i run on my normal printer at home but that's because a stepper driver is like cheap so i'd rather my print not fail and then just replace a dollar stepper driver because i mean whatever i'd rather have my print work um, but that's on my printer at home. It's metal mounts, so sure. it doesn't matter how hot that gets. <laughs> but uh, I changed. You were, you were using, I'm guessing, APLA from 3D Field. Yeah, I was using some APLA. I think it was actually the same spool. Yeah, the green, no, yeah, I never. Spool. I didn't even get a whole spool yeah. through that printer. I, I mean, doing spiral vase mode, you don't get much through it. You did try then, a bench at some point, right? I did. It yeah, didn't no. turn out. No. Yeah, it's, I think we we were no. going to do a time lapse. I have about maybe 15 frames worth. Yeah. So it was, it was about the yeah, you know that, the five minutes we tried it, and then we're like, eh, it's. Yeah, no, that didn't it, work it out. It clogged uh, up. Yeah. It actually clogged up during the interview portion that we did at your apartment. Yeah, this <laughs> this piece here was like that tall, but it, it was clogged at that point, so it was way under extruding and stuff like that. But Yeah, so in in the real world it you know, if he obviously Torbjorn has it right. dialed in. He's, he designed it. The yeah. one that he did at the the printer meetup where he had it in a kind of a, an acrylic looking room. Yeah. That was yeah, super yeah. nice. Yep. And uh, the the kind of creme creme de creme I don't know creme, creme de, de cow. I, I can't think of uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, the nice part that he did was uh, the Tower of Babel, yes, which apparently he designed. I did not know that. Yeah. I haven't read super into the That's... interviews that he's done about it, but mm -hmm. it is at I'm gonna. So actually, I I was saying I reached out to him. He emailed or Facebooked mm -hmm. back. So I appreciate that. And I think he had the understanding that I was gonna read this. So I will read it. Um, I just said, hey, I'm sure my coworker Marcus has a lot of good questions, but I'm just thinking, how do you get it out of that building? Because yeah. it's 13 feet tall. Yep. Uh, it's four meters, 13 and change. Right. Uh, I just said, what happened to Tower of Babel? Is it still where it was? How do you get it out of there? He said, mm -hmm. hello, I think it's left where it was printed at, uh, I'm going to do my best here, Sliperiet in Umea. That's uh, in Sweden. So he's Swedish. I thought right. it was Norwegian, but whatever. Oh. To remove it, they will have to saw it into at least two parts. <laughs> That's so cool. And then I said, thank you. Uh, cool. What's going to happen after it's taken down? Are they going to keep it, recycle it? And he said, uh, the right. university owns it now. Umea is a university, or it's a, it's a city, but Umea University. Uh, I'm not sure what their plan is, but uh, he sent me to somebody that I might actually reach out to, someone at the uh, university. Right. And he said, there are some more big prints uh, coming now that we have uh, more and better hang printers out there. So yeah. Yeah, you said there's a V3 coming? Yeah, they've got some teaser stuff on their, uh, you can go through their GitHub and then they got like blogs and stuff like that you can go through. Um, and this one, instead of all the motors being on the actual printer itself, um, the motors are on anchor points and then string goes to them. And I, there's uh, feedback that they have on the motors and stuff like that now. So they're going to try and get it to be uh, something where it doesn't take you super long to set up. And yeah, it's just kinda, it'll, it'll be a little easier to calibrate. Yeah, maybe more plug and play kind of thing. But, yeah, because um, I watched you try to calibrate and it oh was... Oh gosh, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. it was interesting. It's, I mean, the problem with mine is I could, like this, just this little cylinder, I'd say maybe it's inch and a half diameter or something like that. It, it was not level at all. And <laughs> you'll see in the video, I actually had like pliers and random like tools yes. leveling out this melamine shelf, shelving. So it wasn't level at all, my build plate. But, um, yeah, that's probably my biggest problem was getting it level. And I, I mean, I just wanted to print something super tall, but I still, this is the tallest thing I've printed, which I don't even about know. About eight inches? Yeah. Nine? They I mean, probably have a ruler somewhere, but. It's nothing too impressive, but 
We it, reorganized, by the way. We'll yeah, maybe do a quick walkthrough at some point, but we... Uh, yeah, there's all shelves. All and shelves stuff. and all the printers are in islands now. Yeah, it's really nice now. A lot I, of... That's... Yeah, we've been... It's a lot more space. We've been busy. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, any tips to someone that wants to put together a hang printer? Uh, try and have a friend help you. <laughs> you, that were might you were saying that. You had a yeah, shout out. What was yeah, the shout out? Brian, uh, he's uh, one of my, he's my best friend from high school and uh, he came up, he's just becoming, just going into college now. So he would come up uh, on weekends and uh, yeah, it, it's something where that project, if I ever got mad at it, I'd stop working on it. But when he was there, he helped me push through, and we. It's like a, it's like a baby. The baby yeah. screaming, leave the room. Just, yeah. You yeah got, just, don't don't take it out on the baby. It's not. Yeah. It's all. It's not. You know. So yeah, I, it, <laughs> he's been a lot of help to it. It's just nice to have someone there, and also trying to hang something like that up in your room is kind of. It takes up a room. Yeah, you can't yeah. use it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it was your whole kitchen table, three yep. chairs, and your yep. ceiling fan, which you didn't. Yeah, that was, You didn't want to turn it on. I I didn't want to turn it on, and yeah. also I was kind of worried with the lights being on. The lights got super warm, and I didn't want it to melt oh, the, for the sure. bracket that holds up there. Um, but yeah, I don't yeah, know we have it. photos and pictures and stuff. Yeah, so it's yeah. So pretty much have a friend and watch your stepper voltage. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the stepper voltage is that big of a deal. I mean, I just assumed that I could go that high and <laughs> I didn't really care if my motors got hot but I should have but yeah and and yeah learn. some boards are harder to change stepper voltages than yeah we learned that yeah. we'll talk about that in a we have some yeah. reviews coming up uh, one of them if yep. you remember we did a an interview with zesty technology yep. they have something that called the nimble ago. and uh, I owe them uh, a review yep. <laughs> so whenever I get time I'm gonna try to yeah. lock that in no, it's not printing though yeah. Well, it's printing a lot better than it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, it prints, but I was seeing if you had a test printer. Oh, not right, right now. now. No. Yeah. So uh, I think that's really all about the hang printer. We could probably talk about it for an hour. Yeah. If we I mean, really it's just to, but... otherwise we're just gonna ramble on about yeah, it. Yeah. If anybody it's... has questions about the hang printer, um, reach out to us and Marcus yeah. can probably talk. I mean, he's yeah, gonna be yeah. here from now on, hopefully. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, Torbjorn Ludvigsen. Yeah. Uh, that's the guy that designed it. You can yep. definitely find some videos. Uh, there's. He has a YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in the in the link down. Whatever. I'll yeah. put it down below in the part where I write stuff. Right. And uh, the other thing that I did in the last week, so that was like pretty much a week ago, and it's torn down now. Yep. But uh, yep. so somebody, we're not sure who. We have some <laughs> ideas, but somebody left uh, a DVD collection here. The only one that I wanted was up. I think you took a couple yeah, others. Yeah, I took like three of them. I actually realized I don't even have a DVD player. Oh, okay. So do you have a disc drive? Uh, no. Yeah. So, uh, so good luck. Uh, yeah. You got some nice coasters. Well, um, yeah. No kidding. Speaking of flat surfaces, we used uh, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days as a build plate on a Monoprice Select Mini. Yep. Yep. And it actually worked pretty well. So I just kind of like threw it That's to you. Surprising. Said, "Tell me when you're ready." And then yeah, it, was, it worked out surprisingly yeah. well. We were thinking like will it print will it uh, will it will it play after you print on it and the answer is maybe yeah um you can see you here sure you want to hold that up in that camera yeah let me see so you I can, can kind of see we printed uh, an oliver rabbit it's the the 3d fuel mascot right. bring it back closer to your face it's going to be in focus there it should be like right on the top like right yeah in there. I don't so know, with glare or something i'm just going to slowly move it side still, to side and hope. there's still a bit of pla on it i think it was apla actually it doesn't yeah. matter but i it's picked off some of it with an exacto knife yeah and it uh, it makes a lot of noise when it's in any disc reader. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. get it to play on my computer here. I brought it home, tried my computer, it did not work. It played some of a, I think it's a really old DVD. If you notice these clips on here, that's like 2001, yeah, that's, 2002. That's when. Um, it says here that it is a 2002 release. So I mean, it's a bit older, so it's probably a little less resilient to torture. Uh, <laughs> But I was I was reading. I couldn't remember what DVDs were made out of, yeah. so I was finding that uh, the base is uh, polycarbonate, mm, wow. and I think it's I forget what the metal is, but aluminum for the metal, and then it's just got lacquer on it. So, yeah. So what so part is polycarbonate? Is I think like I think it's the base. Okay. I so I think the part that we were printing on was a mixture right. of aluminum and lacquer. Hmm. So it actually was a fantastic print surface. I mean, we only did one print. This right. was just for fun. Um, if anybody has a giant collection of laser discs. Yeah. Shoot them our way. <laughs> I have I mean, one at home because I bought it by accident from a record dealer, mm -hmm. and I just kept it for fun because it right. was it was five bucks. I don't have a laser disc reader, uh, but yeah, it, we're gonna try to do some more goofy stuff like this because I thought it was it's funny. So I do have some footage of it printing and mm -hmm. uh, me removing it. But yeah, it's don't try this at home, uh, and not I with mean, your parents' DVD collection yeah. or, or yours, I suppose. It's I don't. I forget the age of our 
our average uh, demographic viewer. Yeah. I just know it's typical for 3D printing. There are maybe 5% girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that much, but yeah. Um, how to lose a guy in 10 days. Yeah. It, I mean, uh, it'd be interesting if its base is polycarbonate. Could you print like, uh, I guess, I don't know, what do you use if you want to print polycarbonate? Do you need like a, like would it stick well to that or like melt to itself? You know what I mean? I don't know how that works. Like I, that's, uh, I'm going to have to do a lot more research now that I, I have to talk. <laughs> Maybe. I have to talk Maybe more now. Maybe you can now. print polycarbonate on a CD, a cheap way to do it. We can give it a I shot. Don't I don't know what, uh, what, what's a good printer to print polycarbonate, like a Taz? Uh, our, probably our... Uh, Prusa? Prusa Mark II, yeah, because it's got that all-metal hot end. Yeah. And if you guys have nice. never used a Prusa before, it's, Oof, it is nice. It's so nice. Perfect. Yeah, compared to the, the yeah, Olinar, good printers. the Olinar is a $200 printer, which I'm yeah. experimenting on, and it's... Yeah, you, it's uh, it, it's, it's worth uh, the uh, seven hundred dollar difference. It's yeah, uh, it's very yeah. a very marked well, difference. Right. I mean, it depends who you are. Uh, I know some people from high school who have that Anet, and they just love it. But that's because they're it's, not. It's fine. They're not a printing company. They don't. You don't need. need their, you don't need to. Yeah. Like we need our printers to work. We just can't yeah. mess around. Like, yeah. yeah. If if it's a hobby thing, it's fine. But oh, if yeah, we need to send out something printer. for three D hubs, we don't want right. to do it twice. So. The Prusa has really been a nice workhorse, so yeah, it has. we might try to get some more of those. They're not the cheapest printer, but no. for what you but get, it's really a pretty affordable thing. And it's, you know you get a lot of Good attachments parts. for it if you want. Yeah. yeah. Good community. It's open it source, too. too. So if you really yep. want, you can put it together yourself. But like right. with like with the, the Taz, you know, they can buy the rails for cheaper because right. they're by a hundred yeah. or a thousand at a time. Right. So if you buy one, it's going to be a little more spendy. Right. So I think that's really it. Uh, we're trying some things out. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're going to maybe try to, like I said, get Eric Atchison in here. He's another one of the tech guys. So yep. when you're not downstairs, maybe you'll be up here helping me out a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, if you have any ideas or things that you'd like us to talk about, we can definitely give it a shot. I can't say that we'll do it for sure because some things are just... Right. Apparently the wheelhouse expression is a boat thing. The wheelhouse expression. Out of out of my wheelhouse, whatever. Oh, out of wheelhouse. your wheelhouse. It's a boat, oh, yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a boat maritime okay. thing. Okay. I don't know. Yep. That's out of my wheelhouse too. Okay. So, so it's, <laughs> we'll get, it's terrible. Uh, okay. We'll get we'll give it a shot, and then uh, yeah. you know, definitely thank you for subscribing. Um, mm -hmm. Just like this video if you like it. If you don't like it, yep. do that too. Give us some yeah. some feedback. feedback either way. Feedback's welcome. And uh, yeah, get used to seeing uh, Marcus Moldashel. Moldashel. Mold, yeah, I missed enough. a letter. I'm, I'm not Mold. too stressed about Marcus it. Marcus M. Yeah, he's there the only go. Marcus here, so it's. Yep. The two Eric's we have to specify. Yep. So thank you, and we'll see you sometime soon. Yep. See you guys. Twenty bad. minutes. Hey. Hey, right on the dot. Uh, I was probably more like eighteen, but right. But still.